What's up guys, welcome back to another GGF video and today we'll be taking a look at the brand new Z690 Aqua from ASRock. Now you might be wondering why I've got a few boards here. I've got a chassis here because after I do a quick coverage on the board, I want to talk about possible build ideas uh, around this motherboard because ASRock have sent this board uh, for me to try and do a good looking build based around this board. So I've got a bit of a mock-up design here on what I may end up going with. But first off, I wanna sort of go back in time and go through the history of the Aqua. So first off, you probably remember this. This is the very first Aqua we saw. Pretty much out of nowhere, ASRock just dropped this. I think it was one of the Combitexes we saw this. So this is the X570. This is based on the AMD chipset. And you can see the design there. It's getting a bit old now, but it still does look pretty good. You've got that whole silver design, but it is just one color slate, and that's it, just that silver. Then I would say probably a year later, we then saw the Z490 Aqua. Now this has been painted white. You may remember the build I used this in, and this is the board here. So as you can see, very, very similar design uh, to the X570 Aqua. It's just, of course, using the Intel and so on. Now moving to the brand new Z690, they did skip 590. There's probably no need to uh, make that revision because Z590 wasn't that much of a new platform. It was sort of a sidestep and a new revision, so they didn't need to do that. Now we have this one here. You probably saw the board at the start in the intro, and this is it here. And I must say, this just looks so much better than these original two. Now, don't get me wrong, these original two did look good, but this new one just looks heaps better. I think the guys uh, behind this who designed this have done a great job. Now, I'm not just saying that because ASRock do support me really well. They send me a lot of boards, but you must admit, this is a gorgeous looking board. Uh, you got the brushed aluminum accents. You also have the mirror covers on the two M.2 slots over here. There is a third one up here, which is brushed. And also, I like how the RGB is just subtle. I'll get some close-up shots of these. You've got the RGB on the logo on the chipset, and then you have a RGB line here. You don't have RGB coming at it everywhere, uh, not out of the block, which I think will look good, because when you do illuminate large areas of RGB, it does look very overexposed, and it just doesn't look good. Now, this does come in two models. There's an OC version and a non-OC. Now, of course, this is the OC. The only difference I can see, I've gone on the website, I've checked them both out. The VRM spec is the same, everything else is the same, except the OC model, you get a heap of uh, quick access buttons down the side. So if you've got this on a test bench, it is easy to access very much on the OC formula. I covered the Z590 uh, OC formula uh, last year sometime, and that had the OC buttons down here. So if you're an overclocker, these are very, very vital because you can do up and down on the on the clocks and so on to help achieve those world records. And the non-OC model, the only difference is instead of two dims, because of course two dims will be better if you're trying to break those records. And then you have the four dims on the non-OC. And then of course, down the bottom where they have the little model number, this one here says GGF events, but on the OC, it's gonna say OC at the very bottom. And then non-OC, I'm pretty sure it's just not going to have that OC. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the sort of the layout of the board. I really do like it. It's got a nice back plate that follows the same design. And the block for this only does the CPU and the VRMs. And it does do another little chip down here as well. And then you don't really need to cool the chipset on the Intel boards, unlike on the AMD where it went down onto the chipset. Now I do want to cover some of the main features. Of course, it does have a full mono block and that's really what the Aqua boards have been doing because we've got the three here. They all have the mono blocks. They've all changed each year. Uh, this one, I think I've taken up. It's much more streamlined. It's much more compact. As you can see on these other ones, like this one on the uh, Z490, although the bit of glass at the front um, acrylic has removed, it was just huge. You can see the depth this one has. It was nearly out. It's pretty much flush with the IO shield. Now that doesn't really cause any issues, but it was very, very big. This one is much more streamlined and you can see the actual size of it there. And I think it does look much cleaner. Now what I do like about this block is 
if you have been water cooling for a while, um, one annoyance when it comes to water cooling, I wouldn't say it's an issue, it doesn't cause any problems, is when you have coolant bleed, that's when you have say a block and you've got an, an outer O-ring to seal all the coolant inside, but then you've got areas that it doesn't matter if coolants will go over that areas, it doesn't need it for cooling, but it's just gonna overflow out of the main coolant uh, channels. And it does look a bit messy. If you're using uh, colored coolants, pastel coolants, it means you'll get some seepage in those areas and that doesn't look good. What I like with this block, I'll get some uh, close-ups, is there seems to be O-rings all the way around only where the channels are. So I'm gonna actually uh, fill this up with some colored coolant and have a play around with it. I'll probably add some shots in now. I didn't wanna do it beforehand um, and mess up the block with coolant before I filmed it. So I'm gonna play around, throw some shots on and see if there is any coolant bleed. But I think it's really only just gonna be, you're gonna see the coolant in the channels, which I think is going to be very, very nice. And moving on to some of the main features, of course, we have a 20 power phase design, which is pretty insane. It's got a 105 amp smart power stages and a 12 layer PCB. So kind of similar to the Z590 OC formula we saw, 12 layer PCB is pretty crazy. And the 20 uh, power phase design is quite insane. Another interesting feature is we've got dual Thunderbolt 4, USB 40 gigabit, and that is the type C on the rear, which is also nice. So plenty of connectivity there. The only downside I would, I would say, now a lot of you guys who do like your USB, there is only four USB on the back. Now I'm not sure why ASRock have gone down that route. Uh, there are dual type C and USB three on the front. So you do have dual each of those, which is quite a lot. So maybe they've catered for uh, less on the back, more on the front. But then again, a lot of cases I think aren't gonna have the dual type C and then the dual USB three for the front anyway. But um, I'm pretty sure there's a reason why they didn't jam it out with uh, with USB. Maybe probably because the dual Thunderbolt have actually taken some of that bandwidth. Of course, it's DDR5. So if you go up the OC, you have the two dim slots. And then if you go up the non-OC, you have the four and that'll be up to 6,500 or whichever plus OC. Uh, we also have 10 gigabit LAN, which is done by Quaintia. And then there's also 2.5 gigabit by Killer. Now, for some of you who aren't familiar with Killer, they have been bought out by Intel. So basically, that's just gonna be an Intel NIC if they have merged uh, at this stage. I think they were bought out like a year or so ago. And then it's got uh, Wi-Fi 6E, so it's added to 11AX uh, 6E, which is pretty sweet. And then we have three NVMe uh, M.2 slots, two behind this, these mirror covers. Now these are all aluminum covers, very, very shiny, and it was quite hard to get these on film. And then we have a third one up at the top here. Now I have seen some of the other high-end boards maybe jamming in four or five. I'm not sure how they're managing to fit that many SSDs on a board, because I'm pretty sure if you uh, maxed out four or five NV NVMe SSDs on a board, you are going to be limiting other factors, probably like, uh, PCIe slots and SATA and so on. All oh, right, um, one area I do wanna cover is this board has already taken out a heap of overclocking records. Uh, you may have noticed in my Z590 uh, OC formula coverage, uh, Splave is one of the top overclockers. Uh, he's based in the US. He always gets these ASRock boards early and he does a heap of uh, overclocking and this board has already taken out a heap of records, although the board he has, if I do throw up some photos, it was just the PCB only, and I think it did have some random, I think it had a Steel Legend heatsink on, but the actual cover design from ASRock hadn't been completed yet, so it was just the actual PCB only, and that was it. Okay, now moving on to, I don't want this video to go too long, I do wanna cover what you actually do get in the box. Don't need to go over too much, so I'll just make some room here because I think ASRock have done a very nice job on presenting this board like they have always done with their Aqua series and probably RAM for the system. I'll get some shots of this. Um, G Skill uh, were nice enough to send me some of their, this is their Trident Z5 and it is very, very nice. I'm not sure is it Trident ZS or Trident Z5. It looks like a five, but it could be an S. I'm assuming it's gonna be five because it's DDR5, but it kind of looks like an S. But anyway, that matches the board pretty much spot on and I will definitely use this in the build. Now moving on to what's inside the box, if I can actually get to it. So once again, for those who do uh, purchase this board, the run number is 500, so you'll get a number out of 500. And the reviewer models like this one are excluded 
out of that run number, which I think is good because 500 is a very limited amount and say 50 or 100 go out to review as well, that only makes it down to 400. So you get this nice little card saying thank you for this purchase, blah, 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 and you get a little card which you can keep. It's just something nice, um, a little bit extra when you are paying a bit for this board because this retails, I've only found the US price, it's about 12.99 US dollars and that compared to the ROG Glacial, the ROG Glacial is 19.99 US so it is still a little bit cheaper. So it's really up to you. It'll probably go down to brand loyalty. I know a heap of people love their ROG products but if you do want something a little bit different, not everyone is gonna have, then this might be the board for you. I've actually got a heap of screws in here that were from that mono block, which I don't want to lose. It's kind of taking up a lot of room. Okay, so this is what the box looks like inside. Pretty much stock standard to what their previous ones are. I'll get some shots of these. You do have things like uh, a leak tester. Uh, you may have seen other companies release ones like this. So this is just a pressure, so it just pretty much shoots air into your system. It's just like pumping up a tire. Uh, you've got to make sure, depending on what components you are running in your system, FLTs, different reservoirs, different blocks, they all have different PSI ratings. Uh, I would uh, recommend checking out what your loop can handle before just uh, shooting this to the max because you could actually break something in your loop. But it is nice that they've thrown this in the, uh, in the whole motherboard kit. Um, then we just got things like all your standard cables, Wi-Fi antenna, you've got your manual, and then you've got things like thermal paste, and it really is nice that they have gone to the effort. Let me just get some room here. So they've supplied a, actually that's pretty handy. So they've supplied another whole set of the monoblock screws. So these four big ones are for directly behind the CPU. They hold down the bulk of the block. These smaller ones are around the VRM. And then they've also given you a heap, which is really good, of these are your M.2 thermal pads, so they've given you a spare set of those three. Because sometimes once you've had an SSD in there for a while and you move it off, it can sort of break off and you might get it in a few pieces, so it's good to have spare ones of those. And then these are the ones for the uh, water block, CPU water block, and it actually gives you, I'll get this close up, an actual nice little shot of which ones go where. Uh, the small one goes down, I'll just pretend this is a board, the small one goes down the bottom, and then you've got the two longer ones, one up here or two up here, and then uh, the two shorter ones at the back. So it's really nice they've gone to that extra effort, because I've used boards before that comes with uh, mono blocks. I've used them once, and then I pull them off, and then sometimes the thermal pads you get with them, uh, are a bit corroded, sometimes they stick really well so when you pull them off they separate and then you're pretty much stuck and you cannot use them again. You have to try and source your own thermal pads which is never a good thing to do. Um, anyway, so that's most of the board there. Um, I want to talk about the the build ideas I want to go with and I want to see if you guys have any input and any ideas you would like to, like to suggest uh, for doing a really nice looking build for this board. Now. First off, I want to try and get the color of the whole theme right. As you can see, this board has a lot of uh, chrome and a lot of brushed aluminum. First off, this is the uh, Silverstone TJ07. This is probably one of my favorite cases of all time. I saw someone selling this second hand at a really good price. I picked it up, I've stripped it down, cleaned it up. Now I'm determining whether I should repaint this black. I'll probably repaint it just to get it back in uh, brand new condition. I'm thinking I'll repaint it black only because I want the board to stand out. I could get this painted a powder color, uh, powder coated silver, but I just think that will, you just won't have the contrast between the board and the rest of the components. Everything will just blend in. So I'm thinking of going black or a completely different color altogether. Now you might be wondering what this distro is in the back. Well, I had a little play around with it. And if you remember the 909 EK, so that was the collaboration between uh, EK and Inwin. They released, I think, a thousand cases of that 909 with that EK distro in the back. Now that was inverted. So I was lying in bed one night and I had this idea, well, the cases are pretty much similar. If you flip this upside down and spin it around, it does look like a 909. So I pretty much gutted the 909 EK, took the distro out, 
flipped it upside down and I managed to install it in the TJ07. Now, I didn't destroy the case in any way. I didn't even have to re-drill any or tap any holes in this distro. I simply used the threads that were already in the distro, made new holes in the back, and it pretty much sits in here perfectly. I've worked out I can completely redo this loop Although because it's upside down, the fill is now at the bottom and I've worked out there's no way I can actually fill this loop without running a dedicated reservoir. So I'll probably run a separate reservoir maybe behind here. I'm actually not gonna go with this idea. This was just a play around to see because I do need to link an in and an out over here because that's how it did run in the, in the 909. The top port and the bottom port over here ran into the second uh, chamber in the 909. So I'm probably gonna recreate something similar like this where this side piece will run to the front of the chassis and I might actually come out a little bit and then straight and then I can conceal a tube reservoir in the back there. That'll directly go down to a pump. So, so that'll get my system running. I don't have to worry about uh, exhausting the pump from coolant, it'll be directly under it. And then that'll link back up into here and then that'll start the actual distro uh, coolant flow into the system. So that's just an idea. Um, if you guys have any ideas on cases, because to be honest, I'm running out of cases to use for a lot of these showcase builds. I think for, geez, for the X570, I use the Inwin Tau 2.0. That's that crazy mirror one for uh, the Z490, I originally used the uh, Cosmos C, I think it's 700M. Then I painted this white and used the Antec Torque chassis that painted white. So I've used some pretty interesting cases. So this one might be, might be toned down a little bit, uh, but in saying that it definitely, like I don't, don't wanna go anything too crazy over the top because I want the focus to be purely on this board here. But yeah, if you've got any case ideas, anything, throw them in the comments, let me know. I'll probably go with EK only because if I do end up using this distro, and let me know about this distro idea. If you think it's gonna to be too much, uh, it might look the same. I could call this the TJ07EK, pretty much the same as the 909EK, but it'll eventually look like a 909EK that is not inverted, so in the standard layout. In terms of GPU, I'm not sure. Um, I might just use the 3080 reference, whether it'll be ver vertical, uh, normal, uh, horizontal, I'm not sure. Going EK, that'll probably probably give me the best selection of blocks so that I can go full nickel, uh, clear plexi, and so on. But definitely, I'll probably maybe go with the nickel, uh, full nickel block from EK. That'll match this perfectly. And then I'll work on tubing, uh, even colored coolant to go from there. But yeah, if you've got any ideas, let me know. Any crazy things you think you might want this uh, build to go down. I'll probably, uh, with this front section here, I won't add the drive bays back in. If you're familiar with the TJ07, had a heap of those flimsy drive bays. Now it's 2022, uh, drive bays are the thing of the past. Now if you are familiar in the PC building scene, you probably heard of Snef. I'm pretty sure he's based in Canada. He does a heap of awesome builds. He does a lot of distros. He's recently done a build in this TJ or a TJ07 and he did cut out the front and he filled it back in. So he basically just cut out a, a, a same piece, similar size, like JB welded it in, sanded it all down, repainted it and it looked like the case was completely flush. It came up that stock. So I'm thinking about doing the same thing, but I may get the uh, Aqua logo, which is this one here, uh, laser cut into that front panel. Then I can backlight that with a bit of plexi and some LED strips just to give it that extra uh, extra little special detail to theme it towards this motherboard. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I didn't want to go on for too long, but I really wanted to just bring this video out to show you guys this board because it is a really nice looking board. I know the performance is there. Uh, Splave has done all that testing. It is a very nice board. To me, the Aqua has now, I wouldn't say it's replaced the uh, OC formula, but it's like it's got the OC formula uh, backbone to it, but then it's got that extra cooling and aesthetics that the Aqua has always had. But yeah, that's it for this video. Any uh, comments you have about this build, about the board, just um, shoot them in the uh, YouTube comments and let me know. I wanna thank Azrock for sending out this board to check out, and I'll see you in the next one.